This program is recorded and presented by Chippewa Valley Community Television. This is a rebroadcast of the Eau Claire School Board meeting. The audio for this program can be heard on WRFPLP 101.9 FM. I call this special budget meeting to order. Um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Um, could we please, um, Patty, did we, did we do the open meeting sloth? Yeah. Would you like to take roll call, please? You bet. Commissioner Barstead. Here. Commissioner Duax. Here. Commissioner Fager. Here. Commissioner Hambuck Boyle. Here. Commissioner Harder. Is absent. Commissioner Luganbill. Here. Commissioner Boo. Here. So we are going on to the budget and have a discussion. Um, take it away, Abby. Thank you. So a lot of the information is going to be familiar to what we saw a couple weeks ago, but it's just been updated because our state aid numbers were certified and now we know what our final tax levy will be. So um, just quick non-referendum budget versus referendum budget. We'll go through the differences. Um, revenue limit, again, just a reminder that the state statute limits the amount of revenue that a school board can have, and mostly that is for local property taxes and state equalization aid. Um, factors that impact the revenue limit are student enrollment, our per student spending in prior years, and additional funding allocated by the state. Equalized aid, again, um, aid and property taxes is really what makes up our revenue limit formula. Factors that impact the equalized aid are student enrollment and our local equalized value, or our property values. Revenue limit, you'll remember my little scale. If, if state aid goes up, property taxes go down. If property taxes go up, state aid goes down. All right, so these numbers have been updated with our final um, levy amounts from last week that DPI certified. So you can tell that um, in 2017, our property tax, um, this is non-referendum dependent, will be 56,191,818. And our equalized aid is 58,117,093. We like to put that out in numbers and also on the graph because sometimes it's easier to see it both ways. Um, and as you will recall, our state aid went up about $2 million this year. So that means our property taxes will go down. And then can this you, is, oh, I'm sorry. Just, yeah, I just want to look at it a little longer. I'm sorry. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions or anybody else want to look at it a little longer? Can, okay. can I ask one more question? Yeah. When, um, when we were given the information in July, uh -huh. Does this somewhat mirror what we thought was going to happen? It's a little bit different. Our, our estimated aid that we received on July 1st did indicate that we would have a state aid increase. Um, I don't believe it was as much as it ended up being. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Just another way to look at the size of the pie. And so in 16, you can see that our aid, equalized aid was 49.6 and our property tax was 54. 50.4%, and then in 17, our aid went to 50.8%, and our property taxes went to 49.2. So again, you can really see with that increased aid how that changes our percentages. But in a district our size, to be very close to that 50-50 is, is pretty amazing because some districts are very different. So we tend to, I think historically, we've been pretty, much, pretty close to 50-50 each year. Um, our revenues by fund. Um, the only one that's been updated since the last time you saw that was the general fund. And the general fund was updated um, based upon the final changes that came through on our revenue limit worksheet, um, which were related to our prior open enrollment changes that DPI notified us on last week. And that was about $75,000. And then also for our vouchers. Our vouchers for 1617 total $513,000. So, uh, those would be the numbers that changed in the general fund. 
from the last time you saw this. Can, can you say that again? Sure. So the general fund, that very top, the general fund, the, the blue here and this top line would be the only number that have changed since I, since I presented this a week ago. And the changes were from the vouchers and the prior open enrollment um, that I wasn't aware of when I presented this originally because DPI certified that to us on the 14th of October. Okay. So the change in the tax rate, this is non-referendum. Um, so you can see in the 15-16 school year, our final tax r mill rate was $9.40 per $1,000 of equalized property value. And um, outside of any referendum activity, the um, mill rate for the 16-17 school year would be $8.85. So you can see that's a 55 cent decrease per $1,000 of property tax or $55 a year for someone that owns a $100,000 home. Okay. It is great. And this is just another way to show it. Um, so a graph of in 15-16, our property tax was $9.40 and in 16-17, um, based upon tonight's adoption would be $8.85. And then just a quick update on our fund balance. Um, and so you can see in 16, we ended our fund balance at 36 million. And because we have a um, projected deficit for 16, 17, outside of referendum, our fund balance would drop to 32 million. And you can see the biggest change would be in fund 10, which is where most of our expenditures happen. So how does that, the numbers I just showed you, look different than a referendum budget? Um, and how will the 5860000 be used in 1617? So based upon our discussion at one of the last board meetings, um, we had talked about just increasing our tax levy by the 5860000 and use that cost in 1617 for operations. So I've just updated a few numbers and slides because we didn't change expenditures at all. So here you can see that assuming a successful referendum that our property tax um, number would increase to 62 million. And so then you can see in the graph below that our property tax goes higher than our state aid. And that would be because that 5.8 million is added to the $62 million number here. Just another, it's the same pie, just updating the numbers. So our stated number didn't change, um, but our property tax number did. I think our percentages aren't right. We made a last minute change. So I think this is supposed, I think our um, state aid is supposed to be 49.2 and 50.8. So I'll get that corrected when we bloat it into board docs. Sorry about that. So the, the numbers are right, but the percentage right. is not correct. But the difference is just what, 0.4? Um, 49.2 instead of 51.6. Right, but I'm talking about the property tax piece. The, the property tax number would be $5,860,000 more. Yep. Yep. Got it. So the physical numbers are correct. The percentage is not correct. And then again, just the revenues by fund. Again, compared to the earlier slide, the only number that is different would be the general fund because that's where we would levy the additional 5.8 million based upon a successful referendum. So again, you, this, this blue area of the pie grows because we're adding um, funds to fund 10. Change in the tax rate if the referendum passes. So again, the 1516 is actually what we levied last year, the $9.40. And 1617 referendum dependent, this would be the 62 million, um, which is with includes the 5.8 million, um, would be $9.77 per thousand dollars. So that means it would increase the cost of the taxpayer would be $37 on a hundred thousand dollar home. I had originally projected this to be 980. But I forgot about the fact that equalized property value changes. And so you can see last year it was, um, you know, six, was a six billion, 110,000, and we went 6.3. 
and so that you don't think it's going to make that much of a difference but it makes a three cents difference when we levy so um when we were double checking things i noticed that today so um so yeah so 37 cents will be the impact that a taxpayer would feel assuming a successful referendum in the 16 17 year any comment on that no i th i think that turned yeah, turned out bit. I mean, it turned out well. It, yeah. it did, and I didn't, um, you know, that equalized value gets certified to us on October 1st, and I didn't even think that, you know, I wasn't thinking about how that affects, because overall, big picture, the number is the same. It's just when it comes down to that property value that that's different to you and I as taxpayers in the community. So I was pleased, but also was like, oh, shoot, I didn't think about that. So, but I think overall, I think it's, it's a good message, and, um, you know, our projections are turning out better with that increased state aid. Dr. Hardebeck? So one of the things that we'll do to publicize this is that we will send out um, an email blast to our families tomorrow and also to our staff to alert them in the, of this change for the 16-17 um, school year. And then an additional tax calculator will be added to our webpage tomorrow with an explanation of why we have two. So basically what the taxpayer will be able to see is what the maximum would be should we ever need the entire 95 cents due to state funding and what it actually will be for next year. Excellent, thank you. Um, Commissioner Luganville? Just a suggestion too of when you send that to parents, if, it's, if it could be sent as a media advisory to the TV, radio, and newspapers, because I would imagine they would just update it on all their websites. Yes, that's what we'll do as well. That's a very good suggestion. Thank you. I think another important thing to keep in mind too as we're learning this is that the 70 or the 95 cents was based upon that equalized value of the 6.1 and so each time that equalized value is updated that 95 cents becomes obsolete and so each year it will be different I think we stick with the two calculators and the 95 because that was our initial projections but it could look different each year depending on that equalized value so just something that we need to keep in mind but 95 cents is our measurement because that's where we were at thanks Abby anybody else Okay. Excuse me, Chris. Commissioner Fager. I, I, I like the idea, uh, Joe, your suggestion, but I also think perhaps letting, letting folks know that 95 cents is the maximum would be critical. And that, that's one of the things we're seeing as we go out, is that people yeah. are not, they think it's about the 95 cents rather than about the ability or the uh, allowance to be able to go to 95 cents if needed. We, we've talked a lot about the fact that we have continue, or have been and continue to be a conservative spending district, so good value for the taxpayer's dollar in this. Um, so we don't have a history at all of not looking at what our community can afford. So um, just want people to know that. Um, Commissioner we've, Dweck. We've had several questions about uh, uh, remodeling Roosevelt and what about South? And so those might crop up again with this change in levy limit. Are, are you asking um, in the change in the levy down the road that maybe we could do South and Roosevelt within this same referendum, depending? I'm not asking that. I'm oh. just saying you might get more questions. Oh, okay. With this change. Yeah, okay, and thank you. So I'd appreciate being advised as soon as we can to know whether we're going to consider work on those schools. Um, Dr. Hardebeck? I think one thing that would have to be taken into consideration and continue to be monitored is the speed at which we pay off our existing debt. And so that will factor into the formula as well. So, you know, perhaps, you know, if we have a successful referendum, then we can have updates, you know, about those payments and where our debt standing is, because that will have a lot to do with it, as well as the state aid. Okay, and this is, again, just another way to look at it. 
Um, so last year, the final mill rate was $9.40. Assuming a successful referendum this year, it would be $9.77. And then fund balance information, um, what the fund balance would look like um, overall if we had $5,860,000 in there. That's the end of my slideshow. Do you have specific questions that I can help answer? Commissioner Luganville? I don't have any other questions. I just, um, before I got on the school board, I was my church treasurer, and we had a budget of $250,000, and I almost got a hernia. So I just, for the work that you do, and Karen, I just want to thank you, and um, I really sincerely appreciate everything that you do for us as a district. I think we all feel that way, Abby, so... Thank you. Here, here, yeah. Thank um, you. The first time through, I've learned a lot, so <laughs> it's um, it's exciting. But it it is kind of at first when you look at it big picture, there's there's a lot there. But thank you. So there's a a couple uh, housekeeping things that we need to take care of um, tonight before we're finished. One is um, I need a board member to canvass the results of the election on November 9th. The time slotted is 3.30 to 6 o'clock. That would be the day after the uh, vote. Uh, you just count through all the little um, counties and townships and make sure the numbers are right and get them on a certain form. Um, do you have anybody that would have the time to do that? I can. Can you? Okay. So Commissioner Fager will do that. Wait. Just give me some more explanation. Oh. <laughs> so so you want to explain what the canvas sure. looks like? I could because I've done it already, but go sure. ahead, Abby. Sure. So basically, um, each township and ward, they have to um, provide us tapes with the election results. And we, we have a big spreadsheet, and we have to double-check the numbers to the tapes and make sure they – it's kind of like auditing to make sure that um, what the tapes say are actually what we included in our count. Um, and then we just have to finalize and make sure that the count is matching what the actual tapes. Because the night of the election, they just call them into us. And so it's just that verification and the, that duplication piece. I don't think it'll take two and a half hours, but you just never know. Um, because we don't want it to be rigged. We don't. <laughs> okay. That's what, yeah. yeah. That's the time that we set aside. <laughs> it will be in the paper. We do have to publish it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't put the right part. Yeah, if you can just come to my office, we'll have the table set up with all of the tapes and Thank envelopes. Thank you, Commissioner Fager, for doing that. The other thing is um, we could have a special board meeting on the 10th to approve the tax levy, but as a board tonight, someone could um, move to uh, vote um, Abby as our, del you know, delegate Abby to... Um, have the authority to set the final levy based upon the referendum. So um, if someone would move that in second, we can take a vote, then we won't need to meet again. So, so moved. Second. <laughs> moved, by, moved by Commissioner Harder, second by Commissioner Fager. Um, can we take a roll call? Okay, uh, sorry, Patty. <laughs> I know. It's my first budget as president. Do you think we should do you think we should move to accept the budgets first? Oh yeah, we should do that first. I'll make such a motion. Okay, Commissioner Luganville moves to adopt the budget. Second. Second, <laughs> Second by Commissioner Barstead. Um, can we take a roll call vote on that? Thank you. Yes. That's why I have Patty be my coach. <laughs> okay. Commissioner Barstead? Yes. Commissioner Duax? Yes. Commissioner Fager? Yes. Commissioner Hambuck Boyle? Yes. Commissioner Harder? Yes. Commissioner Luganville? Yes. Commissioner Boo? Yes. And now we'll take, can we still have that? Let's, should we, is it still on the table? Okay. So then we'll take a roll call vote on that as well. This is to take a vote to delegate Abby as the authority to set the final levy based upon the referendum. Deputy President. 
delegate. Designate. I delegate. I said delegate. We're, des we're delegating Abby Johnson to set. Abby Johnson has the authority to set the final levy based upon the referendum. Roll call vote, please. Who who moved it? Can we just go over it? Commissioner Harder and Commissioner Fager. Okay. Now we can take a vote. Commissioner Barstead? Yes. Commissioner Duax? Yes. Commissioner Fager? Yes. Commissioner Hambuck Boyle? Yes. Commissioner Harder? Yes. Commissioner Luganville? Yes. Commissioner Boo. Yes. Um, and then I think all we have left to do is have someone move to close the meeting. It's so moved. Commissioner Duax, motioned. Commissioner Vu, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. We have concluded the budget meeting. Yay. This program is recorded and presented by Chippewa Valley Community Television. Chippewa Valley Community Television is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, you can contact us by calling 715-839-5067 or on the web at www.cbctv.org.